Sony just announced the Xperia Pro, a $2,500 smartphone that can act as an HDMI monitor for your camera. I wanna show you how just a few weeks before that announcement, I did the exact same thing for 30 bucks and my old phone. All right, I'm gonna give a little bit of backstory. Uh, so if you just wanna get to the whole build of this thing, there's gonna be time codes and the parts you're gonna need down in the description below. Sony just announced the Xperia Pro. It's basically a modified version of their Xperia flagship phone uh, with a couple of additional features added on. Namely, the big feature that people are talking about is the addition of an HDMI port on the phone so that you can plug an HDMI device in and use it as a monitor for your camera. Now, ironically, a few weeks ago, I was looking at my phone and I had this thought. I had this whole conversation in my head and I said, wow, you know, these phones have really large screens. Uh, these screens are super high quality, they're super bright, they're super sharp, they're very crisp, they're very color accurate, and they're also in this tiny body, really well made, uh, that has a built-in battery that lasts all day long. Why can't I use this as a camera monitor? And so then I set out on a little quest to use my phone as a camera monitor and figure out a way to do that. The key to doing this is this guy. This is a USB 2.0 capture card. Now, these guys are fairly new. They started popping up on Amazon around March last year, right when the whole pandemic started and everybody was shifting to online video. These popped up as an incredibly cheap alternative to something like this, the Elgato Camlink 4K. Now this, I was looking at it and I was looking at this device and I thought, why can't I plug this into my phone? Turns out you can, you just need the right adapter and you need the right phone. You see, I wanted to use this in my office because I have actual camera monitors that I use when I'm out shooting in the field, uh, but I didn't want to spend money on buying a whole bunch of camera monitors to use here in the office because I just use this office mostly for doing YouTube stuff uh, and I don't actually do much professional filming in here, so I didn't want to spend money on uh, buying all these monitors and stuff that are just going to sit in my office. And so one of the requirements for me is that I didn't want to have to have to worry about battery. I didn't want to ever have a situation where my phone wasn't charged because then it's useless as a monitor if the battery is dead. And turns out that's where this gets tricky. See, in order for your phone to use this USB adapter, it has to have OTG capability. That means on the go. And that allows the, the phone to transfer data back and forth between a USB powered device. Back in the day, this used to be a whole lot less common than it is now, but most phones now actually do have this capability. However, there's still a problem. See, if you have a device plugged into your USB, then your USB port's taken up. So how are you going to charge the phone? And that's where phone selection gets very tricky. What you need is a cable like this guy. So this cable splits into two and allows you to do both at the same time. It allows you to plug in a charging device to charge your phone, as well as plug in a USB device to use OTG at the same time. The thing is, this won't work with every phone in the way that you would expect. A lot of phones, you can only use half of this cable at a time. So, so you'll only be able to either charge or use OTG at the same time, you can't do both. So you may want to make sure what phone you're picking can do both before you go and buy one of these. You, you might not be sure. In my case, I wanted to use one of my old phones. So I tested it out on four different phones. So I tried it out on my HTC One M7. Uh, that didn't work. I tried it out on this Galaxy S6. That didn't work. I tried it out on this Nexus 6P. That didn't work. But I tried it out on this, my Essential PH1, and it did work. It can do both charging and OTG at the same time. Now, you can tell this is an old phone by how the thing is literally being held together with tape, but I digress. So now we got to put this thing all together. First, what you're going to need to do is you need to take your phone. So in this case, we're going to use the essential phone uh, and we're going to take our tripod clamp. So this guy, and we're going to put it right here on the phone. And we wanna make sure we place this so that it's not getting in the way of any of our buttons. Next up, we're going to want to take our capture card and we're gonna to wanna to place it 
onto our device and see where it's going to look comfortable. Next thing, we want to take our USB cable and start to just plug it in and see how it's going to place onto the device. So we're going to go ahead and do this and it's going to plug in just like that. And then what you want to do is you want to take 3M pads like I'm showing you here. <clears throat> so then what you want to do is you want to take 3M pads like I'm showing you here and you want to permanently mount your HDMI capture device to where it's going to rest as well as the charging end of the USB cable where it's permanently going to rest. In my case, I'm doing it on the actual clamp itself. Now, all you have to do is plug everything in, plug in USB power, and you're good to go. Next, we need an app. What could we possibly use to watch an HDMI feed off a USB capture card? Turns out, endoscope apps. So endoscopes are just cameras that people use on phones all the time. And what you can actually do is use endoscope apps, and there's tons of them on the App Store, to plug in and view at a USB capture feed. And so what I've done is the one that I'm using is linked down in the description below. It's an actual APK. It's not on the App Store, uh, but it's just the one that was recommended by a few people online. And so that's the one I'm using and I've linked it down in the description. And that is that. You can plug everything together and boom, you've got your own little monitor. Looks something like this. Boom, boom, boom. Like that on the back. And you're ready to go and have a fun time romping around with this little camera monitor powered off of battery. Now, the total cost of this thing cost me around 30 bucks to build two of these each, so around $60 total. Uh, and it made use of a phone that was literally just sitting in a drawer collecting dust. These phones are all old, uh, they're not phones I'm using anymore, and so I was able to make use of these old phones. Compared to the $2,500 Xperia Pro, I'd say that's a bargain. So that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like down below, subscribe, comment, do all of that stuff that they tell you to do in school, kids. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.